we are going to look at a very important endocrine disorder that is Cushing syndrome. Before we delve into the matter, we just uh, need to uh, review some anatomy. And the Cushing syndrome occurs as a result of a problem of a hormone that is produced from the adrenal, uh, adrenal gland. Now, the adrenal gland is located just on top. It sits on top of the kidneys. And if it is uh, cut into a cross-sectional section, we can actually see it has mainly the innermost layer, which is the adrenal medulla, and the outermost, which is the adrenal cortex. Now, the cortex, if divided into sections, it has three zones. The innermost adrenal cortex region is the zona reticularis. Then we have the middle one, which is zona fasciculata and zona glomerulosa. All these sections have specific hormones that they actually release. Now, the reticularis produces androgens, while the fasciculata uh, produces glucocorticoids like cortisol, then the mineral corticoids are produced from the zona glomerulosa. A classical example of a hormone from this uh, category is aldosterone. Now that we know that, we can now delve into the problem of Cushing syndrome. So first of all, this disease was described by a neurosurgeon, Harvey Cushing. And actually, when he was looking at um, <coughs> pituitary tumors, and you know, the pituitary is located in the brain. So him being a neurosurgeon, he was able to make a, a linkage, he was the first person to actually make a linkage between occurrence of pituitary tumors with um, the presence of certain signs and symptoms like obesity, facial uh, um facial um, kind of changes, um, and then you have trunk, uh, trunk, trunk or obesity. So facial changes like uh, somebody having a moon face or such kind of symptoms. So from that time, then it was actually, the disease was named after him, Cushing, Cushing syndrome. So basically the disease is a clinical disorder characterized by, and this is very important, overproduction of a glucocorticoid, okay, like cortisol. So we have several ways we can end up having this excess production, mainly uh, the problem being um, endogenous causes. And the main cause, the main cause of excess production of cortisol is when we are having uh, a hyperplasia of the, um, of the, basically of the, of the adrenal, bilateral adrenocortical hyperplasia, okay? So, what what happens in this case is that we end up having overstimulation of the adrenal cortex, basically, as a result of a uh, overproduction of a hormone that stimulates the adrenal glands. So this hormone is adrenocorticotrophic hormone. So when we end up having excess production of ECTH, it overstimulates. It overstimulates the adrenal cortex, uh, specifically the region that produces, um, in this case, cortisol. And we end up having, therefore, excess production of cortisol, which uh, is found in blood. So that is the major cause, bilateral adrenocortical, uh, adrenocortical hyperplasia. So the other ones, we can have um, ectopic production of ACTH from uh, non pituitary tumors and also adrenal adenoma. So having an adenoma or tumor exactly at the adrenals. Uh, so as you realize this, this um, especially the first one, the problem more majorly is at the pituitary because it is at the pituitary that we release ACTH. Therefore, um, actually this condition where you have a problem with the pituitary leading to pro excessive production of ACTH is called Cushing disease. So Cushing disease is the number one cause of Cushing syndrome. Then you have other exogenous causes where like you have um, long-term um, long-term intake of corticosteroids, uh, like in cases where we have treatment of asthma. Then um, when, when um, if we look at the normal physiology, basically, uh, we know that we have stimulation of production of cortisol from um, a very, a very straightforward uh, channel. And in this case, ACTH um, uh, stimulates the adrenal gland, okay? and ACTH is produced from the pituitary. Before ACTH is produced, it is the pituitary is also stimulated by CRH, which is corticotropin-releasing hormone from the hypothalamus. So it's all from the hypothalamus where we have secretion of cortical, uh, corticotropin-releasing hormone, goes to the anterior pituitary, stimulates the production of uh, adenocorticotrophic hormone, which now goes to the adrenal gland to, uh, to stimulate production of cortisol. So it's quite a straightforward uh, kind of 
axis of production of this uh, cortisol hormone. In therefore, we have um, negative feedback mechanisms that are made. If we have excess cortisol in blood, we will have um, a negative feedback mechanism being sent to the hypothalamus to reduce production of CRH, and also information being sent to the anterior pituitary to reduce production of ACTH. Uh, therefore, we will have reduction on production of cortisol and therefore regulate the amount. Now, <clears throat> cortisol has different roles. And more importantly, we have uh, things like it plays a role in uh, increasing the blood pressure, uh, suppression of the immune system. Uh, it also very importantly counteracts the action of insulin. Okay, therefore we'll end up having a lot of uh, blood sugar, sugar in, uh, in in the blood. So it also reduces the amino acid intake, uh, also affects uh, bone formation, and it also aids in metabolism of fat. And as you'll see, then therefore we have uh, some signs and symptoms as a result of this. Then stimulation of glucose, uh, stimulating glucose and glycogen turnover. And then it also affects the circadian rhythm. And also to mention, it plays a very important role in increasing sodium and water retention, as well as affecting fertility. So how does the problem occur? Remember the negative feedback mechanism we talked about. So when um, ACTH uh, feedback does not respond, if, when the pituitary does not respond to the negative feedback mechanism, we end up having excessive production of ACTH. Therefore, we have a lot of production of cortisol, even when we don't need it. Ideally, by the way, in our body, cortisol is normally released in response to stressful situations. So when you have some, some uh, sort of stressful condition, stressful situation, like you can have infection or trauma or such, such kind of things, ideally or normally your body produces cortisol. However, that is regulated where the stress uh, levels go down. Um, however, when we don't have a proper negative feedback mechanism, the cortisol will continue being produced and we end up having hypercortisol, uh, hypercortisolism. So the features we expect are like central obesity. Remember we talked about um, the issues of fat. So central obesity uh, with the extremities being uh, um, a bit thin. Okay, so we have um redisposition basically of fat so they don't, they don't go everywhere they are just deposited uh, along the trunk and you have central obesity also we have moon face and also a fat pad especially just around the like almost around the shoulder region just below the neck uh, what what we call a buffalo hump uh, we have stri, which are um, red and depressed kind of um, lesions, as you can see, over the abdomen because of two things, fat deposition, so at least enlarging that area and stretching the skin, and also the skin itself is normally affected in um, Cushing syndrome. Then we also have sudden weight gain. Remember, we have a lot of blood glucose, so we are actually storing it in um, uh, fat deposits, and we have hypertension. Remember, we said it increases blood pressure and also water retention. So we have hypertension, hyperlipidemia, uh, because of the, the fat is being uh, broken. Lipolysis is happening and it's being taken to uh, the blood. Uh, osteopenia, we talked about the issue of the bones being affected. Easy bruising, okay, because the skin is affected. <clears throat> it can also lead to diabetes mellitus or glucose intolerance. Remember, we said... Uh, that it counteracts the action of insulin, then decreased libido, depression, psychosis, acne, uh, that's a skin problem. Uh, it can also lead to hirsutism and also proximal muscle weakness and recurrent opportunistic bacterial infections because we, we talked about uh, immunity being reduced. So this is just in a nutshell, the kind of problems uh, we can have. And it is not a must that somebody has all these signs and symptoms, but provided they have some of them, then it can point out to pushing syndrome. However, most of the time, some of the time you have uh, patients having plenty of the signs and symptoms. And as you can see, it's not a good thing. Now, diagnosis um, is through history taking and physical examination, but we have to actually ascertain using laboratory tests, like um, looking at the serum cortisol levels. And also there's another test or uh, dexamethasone suppression test to actually see 
whether um, the administration, a low dose administration of dexamethasone, um, with because dexamethasone is cortisol, in, um, it's a synthetic form basically of a glucocorticoid. So is that going to lead to lower lower production, or we end up having uh, the levels going up and up? Okay, so then you have urinalysis, uh, twenty four hour urine free cortisol level. So that is what we check then. Remember, we talked about um, the hypertrophy, so imaging and so such as MRI and CT scan to look at the pituitary and also the adrenals that we, we talked about, one of the cause being uh, an adrenal adenoma. So also looking at such kind of problems. So management, 80% of the causes of uh, Cushing syndrome is Cushing disease. And it, it results from a problem in the pituitary. So a transphenoidal uh, removal of the tumor is very important because that will help uh, if you're able to remove the part of the are affected, you might end up uh, salvaging the situation. Uh, another way of handling the pituitary is irradiation um, that can induce remission of the disease. But also remember in exogenous, um, uh, exogenous Cushing's, uh, we can end up having um, over intake of corticosteroids. So if you reduce corticosteroid use and use only when necessary, then that can also reduce uh, the chances of uh, having this disease progress. Then uh, the other medications like uh, ketoconazole, which is an inhibitor of um, adrenal steroid uh, synthesis. And also we have mitotain, which is uh, a toxic agent that affects the adrenal cortex, therefore the affect production of uh, cortisol. Then you have aminoglutathamide, uh, which blocks cortisol production. So these are some medications that can actually be used uh, to manage uh, Cushing syndrome. So we have so many nursing interventions, but majorly they are based on some of the signs and symptoms we expect. Things like protective environment. Remember, we have chances of fall and fractures. Uh, eating food rich in protein, calcium, and vitamin D. Uh, this is to uh, especially address the issue of osteoporosis. Hygiene and to avoid issues of um, infection. This is just part of the infection prevention control. Bed rest and moderate activity. Uh, fre frequent uh, skin assessment and skin care, among others. And then um, complications we might have. Remember, this patient can end up developing diabetes or we can have osteoporosis uh, due to problems with the bone and then ending up with a fracture. Hypertension, kidney stones can also develop and then we can have serious infections. Uh, in some instances, if we don't do anything, the tumors that are enlarging can continue enlarging and then cause uh, more problems.